Calm your enthusiasm. Here we have the Famia Pacheco Monastrell, and this is from Jamila in Spain. Before he even opens his mouth, I know this is one of Sam's favorites. It is. Yeah. It's my one of my favorites of all time. Fantastic winemaker, uh, Familia Pacheco, um, Elena, Elena Pacheco, and her sisters and her mother are in charge. Very female affair, multi-generation female affair. Uh, down in Jamila, so we're talking just down the road from Benidorm. Okay, yeah, south, yeah. Southern Spain, but on that north, south, eastern coast. Um, and uh, yeah, super hot. And they're all about Monastrell, all about Monastrell. So uh, Eleanor is particularly passionate about showing Monastrell in a variety of different ways. And so um, she'll grow it in different places, in different soils and different environments around the vineyard to showcase it in different ways. Now, you're probably thinking, what the hell is Monastrell? Monastrell, also known as Mouverdre in France, and it is the third grape, if you like, in Côte de Rhone. So <clears throat> if you go to Côte de Rhone or you'll pick up a bottle of wine in the supermarket that says Côte de Rhone or Côte de Rhone Village, or if you're picking up a particularly posh Côte de Rhone called Chateauneuf de Pape, then it will be made from Grenache, Shiraz, and Monastrell, or Mouverdre as they call it in, uh, in France. So yeah, Mouverdre and Monastrell, they're the same grape, in Côte de Rhone, Monastrell or Mouverdre is used for the guts. It's used for the body, the weight. The other mm. two provide the fruit, uh, and it's Mouverdre that provides the weight. And it has a reputation of being a beast of the wine world, that's for sure. I mean, so. yeah, I've, I've had this wine a few times. It is, it's up there. This is a big player. There's no, this is not for the faint-hearted when it comes to wine, red wines. This is this is a big boy. Absolutely. I um, I was lucky enough to go out to the Côte de Rhone once and visit a vineyard there, and we did a bit of blending our own Côte de Rhone. So they gave us a thing of Grenache, and they gave us a thing of Shiraz, and they gave us a thing of Mouverdre, and they said, oh, you know, make up your own blend. Now, just for context, it's against the law to make Côte de Rhone that hasn't got at least 50% uh, Grenache in it. And my blend was 30, 30, 30. So I did 30% Mouverdre. And the Frenchman there, I forget his name, looked at me like I'd spat in his grandma's eye. <laughs> <laughs> it was, it's obscene to yeah. consider putting that much. Mm. But that's how the French view it. But I would say this is, it's 14 and a half percent. It's a beast. Yeah. There's no doubt about it, but. Highly drinkable. You like, could why drink a why lot would of you it. not? Why why would you not do that? I think you know? they do an amazing job of taming the beast with yeah. this wine because you you could drink it for no yeah. problem. Yeah, I mean, I definitely think I should be eating with it as well. I think when you when you're pouring a 14 and alpha, you've got to respect that pour. Yep. You, you've got to, you know, I know I know the whole like eating's cheating thing, mm. but uh, yeah, no, look, look, this this needs to go with food. What what am I having with this? Uh, for me. It's dark fruit, it's black currant, it's rich, you know, it's punchy, there's spice there. You know, you're probably looking down the stew route for sure, stews, casseroles, anything slow cooked. Yeah, it's, it's a beast of a wine, any beastly food, whether it be, you know, slow cooked meat or maybe brisket on the barbecue, that sort of stuff, that's where you're going to match up here. There you are. I'm, uh, I'm going to prepare myself, but I'm finishing this bottle. Cheers. Cheers.